Be inspired with the special message from Bishop Macedo. Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you. And may the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of faith, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the glory of God, may He enlighten the understanding of all of us so we may comprehend God's will for our lives. We've been speaking about faith. However, faith, dear friends, pay close attention. Faith is the power of God inside of us. Because faith comes by the Holy Spirit, which through His Word, passes on to us an assurance, a certainty, such peace, such joy, something that is inexpressible. As much as we talk about it, we will never be able to, to say exactly what it's like, because, pay attention, when we speak of faith, straight away people think of religion. And one thing has nothing to do with the other. Faith has nothing to do with religion because God didn't create religion. God didn't create any religion. If religion would resolve people's problems, if it would help people, then this world would be a blessing. It would be a garden. But it's a garden of hell that we see because religion only brings conflicts into people. That's the reality. Religion separates people. Religion divides people. Religion creates factions. That's the reality. That's the reality. Religion is a torment. But pay attention concerning faith, which is the power of God. Only faith gives us the privilege to enter the presence of God. Only faith. Because you don't see God, you don't touch God, you don't feel God. And how can you love someone whom you don't see, feel or touch? It's by faith. But this faith is not something personal that we are born with. No. This is a revelation of the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of faith. So, firstly, you use or you have a faith, an intelligent faith, not a religious one, an intelligent faith. Intelligent faith focuses on the only and exclusive Lord of heaven and earth, of everything that exists, the only God, the one who manifested himself through the Father in the beginning of mankind, and then through the Son, and finally today he manifests himself through the Holy Spirit. So faith, dear friends, is what brings peace. Did you know that? Did you know that? Do you want peace? First, you have to have faith. Faith in the living God, of course. Why? Because when you have faith in the living God, meaning you have faith in His Word, in what is written, in what He said, in what He spoke, in His rules, in his discipline, his order, when you apply your trust in what is written, because the word of God is the recipe of faith and of forgiveness, because it's through faith that we receive God's forgiveness. Did you know that? Very well. Once you receive forgiveness from God, you receive peace. Of course. Look at how nice. First faith, then 
comes forgiveness and then comes peace. And with peace comes joy, the joy of salvation. David, when he sinned, he said, Restore to me, Lord, the joy of my salvation. When a person is saved, they are someone who is naturally joyful. Actually, yesterday, every universal church of the kingdom of God was spoken about the fruit of the Spirit, which is joy. Therefore, dear friends, pay attention. First comes faith, then forgiveness. With forgiveness comes peace. Peace. You know, when you have a problem with the justice system, and you are placed before the judge, and your solicitor tries to defend your cause, the prosecutors are there accusing you, and the solicitor is trying to defend you, then finally the judge has to come to a conclusion. And then he says, listen, there is no evidence against the defendant. He's free. Straight away, you receive peace and joy. You rejoice that you are not condemned. That's exactly how it happens when we have a living faith in a living God. And yesterday, I was talking about religious faith, which is the faith that people practice nowadays, and they see no results. And it's pointless to change religion. It's the same. Because they do not practice an intelligent faith in the Word of God. Because faith is something rational, intelligent. Faith reasons and considers. Faith evaluates. And then it makes the right decision. Dear friends, we see, and I like to talk about this, it's a classic example in the Holy Scriptures because the Holy Text says that Jesus was entering through a village, then ten leprous men, ten leprous men came to him because they had to be excluded from society. They had to be hidden inside of the caves. And ten came to, to him, and they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Then straight away, Jesus, knowing that just one would return, he healed all ten of them. He said, go and show yourselves to the priest, which was a sign that they were healed, because only the priest had the authority to determine and say whether or not they were really healed. So Jesus told them to go and see the priest. But when they turned their back in obedience, when they started walking towards the priest, they noticed that they were healed. Meaning that a simple action from them and a powerful word from Jesus that said, Go, go and show yourselves to the priest. They obeyed. Then straight away they were healed a powerful word from Jesus and a simple attitude, but very efficient from them. They obeyed, meaning that when Jesus said, go and show yourselves to the priest, straight away they had this assurance, this conviction that that's what they had to do, and they had faith to do it. They were not religious. They were people 
confound to, to loneliness, misery, hunger. They were despised, about to die. However, due to the fact that they heard the voice, the commandment Jesus gave, straight away they were healed. Then, what happened? They were healed. They were perfectly fine. One of them, one of them came back to give glory to God. And Jesus asked him, were there not ten cleansed, healed? But where are the nine? Jesus even expressed his indignation, saying, Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner, the only one who had returned? And he was a foreigner. He was not a Jew. He didn't profess any religious kind of faith. Then Jesus said to him, because he had got on his knees and bowed down and thrown his, himself at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus said, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. But the faith that Jesus passed on to them, let's say, was a global, general faith for everything. But nine of them took advantage of that faith to be healed, to receive the physical blessing, healing, which eventually would end, because they've died already. They are already dead. All of them are dead. However, only one returned with that conviction that that person who had healed him deserved all the praise, honor, and glory. So he was grateful, and he came back to say thanks. And Jesus said, Go, your faith has made you well. Meaning that the only leprous man who came back, the only one who returned, was the only one who received not only healing, not only faith to be healed, to heal himself, but he also received faith to be saved. And this is a picture of the Christian church here. Many are healed, many are delivered, many are blessed, but few receive the Holy Spirit. You can see that, yes or no. Few are baptized with the Holy Spirit, which is the seal, the mark, which is the guarantee that they are saved. So, those who receive the Holy Spirit, the baptism with the Holy Spirit, have this faith of salvation. They remain steadfast until the end. Why? Because they have God's seal, God's mark. And they have an assurance within themselves. Firstly, they have faith, that personal conviction and constant, despite of their struggles and tribulations. They're a person of faith. They have peace because they know that they have been forgiven. They know that they are forgiven. They know that they are of God. And this peace brings joy, the joy, the joy of salvation. Therefore, dear friends, this is the way that I understand faith. It's the way that I've been, let's say, basing my life upon. If my conscience is clean, if nothing accuses me, nothing accuses me, nothing hurts my conscience, if I'm clean, then I'm at peace. And if I'm at peace, I have joy. 
And this is a secret for life. You who are watching me right now, or you who will watch me later on, think well, reason. Why faith? Is faith just for us to conquer things, specific things or material blessings, and then we're going to die anyway. Sooner or later, we are going to die. Yes or no? There's no doubt about that. No one has doubts concerning their death. We will all die. It doesn't matter how much money you have or position, how relevant you are in society. One day, you will disappear. But those... Those who have a faith that gave them the right to be forgiven, these ones are at peace with themselves and above all with God. And this, this position gives us such joy such joy that even before the circumstances and difficulties and problems, we know that God is with us. That's why the author of the book of Hebrews said that it's impossible Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. What a glorious word. Therefore, dear friends, this goes with what Jesus said, many are called, few are chosen, which means the ten leprous men were healed even though Jesus knew that only one would return. Jesus is merciful. He doesn't heal and deliver because the person deserves or because they don't deserve, but because of their faith. All of them had faith to receive healing, but only one had faith to remain healed, not only in the body, but also in the soul above all. So think, consider, evaluate, verify, check your life, see your life through the mirror of God, which is his holy word. I see here, I understand it this way, it's something personal, that 10% indeed is saved. Out of the 100% that hear the word, who are benefited by the word, who have faith, who have faith to conquer the world, only 10%, that's my vision, it's not written, but I see here that out of the ten, just one came back, meaning the tenth, let's say the tithe, only 10% came back. So this goes with Jesus said, many are called, few are chosen. How about you, dear friends? What is your position? What is your situation before what is written? One thing I know, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So firstly, it's necessary that we have this faith, this assurance, this conviction that God exists. And we enter His presence, and because of this conviction, which is faith, we are forgiven. Meaning that we are forgiven not because we deserve, not because we've done good works, charitable works, and so on. No! but because of our faith, our conviction that He exists and He is a rewarder of those who seek Him. So when we have this kind of faith, this quality of faith, we are forgiven. And when we are forgiven, then we enter into peace. We have peace with God, peace with our own conscience. And this peace 
makes us rejoice, rejoice, which is the fruit of the action of the Holy Spirit inside of us. Think well, dear friends, because perhaps you are so worried about conquering this, conquering that, resolving this and the other. Okay, it's fine. Perhaps you are like one of these people who, who are healed. They were blessed. You've been blessed already. But because you didn't return and gave your life to Jesus, then now you are seeking for more blessings. And after you resolve these things, you are going to seek for other things and other blessings. And how long will it last? How long will you live this way, running after the wind? Use your mind, use your intelligence, use your faith with intelligence. And you are going to see that what God offers in His Word is much greater than the crumbs that this world offers us. Crumbs. Although God has promised to His people, to those who believe in Him, to eat from the best of this land, unfortunately, few have been absorbing this understanding that it's not just to eat the best from this land, but to guarantee your eternal life, your soul for all eternity. How wonderful. I wish so much to be able to speak like a poet, you know, to have a beautiful, you know, eloquent speech that would reach out to your heart. But I will give to you what I have received from God. And I pray, I ask, I cry out to God that despite of my limitations, you may understand that the Holy Spirit may make you understand these words because they are fundamental. Firstly, faith. When you believe in the Word of God, when you believe in it, more, more than just acknowledge, you believe in it, you give, you dive in into the Word. And once you dive into the Word, then you receive peace and forgiveness that God gives. You are forgiven, consequently you have peace. And with peace comes joy. Joy. With the peace of forgiveness comes the joy of salvation. The joy of salvation. And this is for those who are willing to use all of their strength, all of their vigor, all of their life, everything, everything, to place it on the altar and say, Oh Lord, here I am. Take my life and let your will be done in me. And God will be sanctified. He will have his name sanctified through your life. May God bless you. By the way, before I end, I wanted to give a special announcement that in the 21st of April, we shall have the Day of Forgiveness. If you want God forgiveness, this is the day that you should organize yourself to be in a universal church of the kingdom of God. On the 21st of April, not this Sunday now, the following Sunday, you will have the opportunity to forgive and also to be forgiven. For you to forgive and be forgiven. We will actually have the book available for those who want the, to read this book, the pleasure, the pleasure of vengeance. You are going to see the pleasure of vengeance. May God bless you all. On the 21st then, the pleasure of vengeance is the release of the book as well as the Sunday of Forgiveness. You are my guest. Forgiveness is fundamental in order for you to have peace. 
Did you know that? You cannot have peace before being forgiven. Because as long as you are not forgiven, you won't have peace. So, on the 21st, we shall have this day, this campaign, that will be a day in which we are going to be praying, crying out, supplicating, asking God for those who want to be forgiven. May God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.